Good morning and welcome to The Garden Tomb. My name is Simon, I'm the director here, and it's a joy on behalf of all the team here at The Garden Tomb to welcome you, those who are here in Jerusalem, but those who are joining us throughout the world. I'm also delighted to welcome Paul Keyes and Jane, his wife. Paul is the chair of trustees of The Garden Tomb, but he also is the director of Walk Through the Bible, an organization that has a passion to share God's word with the world, that the world may be transformed. So you join us, yes, in Jerusalem today, here in Israel. You join us where sadly there have been many images of darkness and death. At the moment here in this land, we are searching for answers, and yet we seem to find only questions for certainty when only faith beckons. Many at the moment are mourning the loss of loved ones through the violence perpetrated by war, and many wait for the return of loved ones held captive. We are praying for you today. And yet very early in the morning, in a garden while it was still dark, the women returned to the tomb, yes, in their grief and their despair. But now at last, in the dark before the dawn, faith finds an answer to its questions. Hope finds a reason for living as Jesus returns to life. Alleluia. And the stone is rolled away and the tomb is empty, making an opening for the Easter message to be proclaimed throughout the world as the disciples run from the tomb into the world, proclaiming Jesus has died, Jesus is risen. And so I invite you now to stand with me and proclaim loud and clear so the whole world can hear as we say together, Alleluia, Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us a new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed him as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's worship him our risen Lord. Alleluia.
till that stone was moved for good, for the land had conquered that. If you have a seat, please be seated for our reading this morning, read by John. Thank you. John 19, 38 to 42. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him permission. So he came and took away his body. Nicodemus also, who earlier had come to Jesus by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds in weight. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths with the spices as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. So because of the Jewish day of preparation since the tomb was close at hand they laid Jesus there. Yeah. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you for the risen Savior, Jesus the Messiah. We praise you for the salvation that we have through his sacrifice and resurrection. We also thank you for the body of Christ, the church, which was purchased by the precious blood of Jesus the Messiah. We lift up our voices to you, our Heavenly Father, on behalf of our brothers and sisters who are being persecuted for the sake of the gospel. We pray that you strengthen them as they stand true to their faith. We also lift up before you the body of believers here in the land of Israel. We pray for the unity of the body here in the land so that by our love for one another, the nation and the world will see that we are your disciples. And Father, it is our prayer every day here at the garden tomb that you open the eyes and the hearts of those here in this land that do not yet know you as their Savior. Save our friends, and our families. We pray for the leadership of this country. We pray for their salvation, for wisdom, as they make decisions in these turbulent and difficult times. We pray that you stir their hearts to humbly seek your face. We also pray for all those who are hurt and suffering, that they will find their comfort and hope in you and finally lord let your name be exalted and glorified in this land and around the world we give you praise we give you all the glory and all the honor for you alone are worthy and we pray all this in jesus name amen
We're going to be seated now for our reading. And then Paul is going to come and share the good news that Christ is risen. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 1 till 10. Now after the Shabbat, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, and then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you so. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to the disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Beautifully read, Ricky. Hallelujah. He is risen. He is risen indeed. I woke up with a few words going through my head this morning. And uh, it, it was a voice of a guy called Jerry, who's a friend of mine back home. And he says, today is not Easter Sunday. Uh, every time I see him, it doesn't matter what day it is, <laughs> he reminds me, today is not Easter Sunday. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah, he is risen. He's risen indeed. We're here today to proclaim Jesus, our Savior, raised from the dead. Having conquered death, he now calls us to join his new kingdom. Uh, and we come to be able to celebrate that today. Uh, as Simon said earlier on, I'm here to, to represent our board of trustees. Um, our board of trustees are a group of volunteers. A group of volunteers who love this place, who love the mission of the garden, to be able to tell people about the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus. Would you continue to pray for us through these difficult times? Would you continue to pray that our vision remains the same and that we are skilled and equipped to be able to do that well? Love to be able to thank three groups of people today. Uh, there are many people who are watching today online and people who are here today who fit one of these three groups. People who pray regularly for the work of the garden tomb. If you're one of those people, I want to thank you today. You keep us open, you keep us running. I want to be able to thank those people who have financially supported us, especially, as we all know, these last four years have been interesting. I think four of the last five years. I joined the Garden Tomb Board in uh, December 2019. They voted me on, and they said, we'll see you in your first real meeting. <laughs> March 2020, I swear, they think I'm Jonah. I'm going to get thrown overboard. Uh, from March 2020, we've had four difficult years and one good year, and praise the Lord, we're still here celebrating today. So I want to thank you to all those people who have financially supported us and kept us running through that time. But I also want to be able to thank all those people who work in this place. Many of them are volunteers. Some of them are members of staff, but their heart is for the gospel. Uh, and we want to thank you today. Simon said, I work for an organization called Walk Through the Bible. And we found out a little bit on Friday of what that looks like because I asked everybody to join in with some things with their hands. And I'm going to do the same again today. Uh, we're going to do different ones, and I'm going to make it easier on Simon because Simon tried to 
do it afterwards and struggled. Uh, we looked last time at the offerings and feasts, offerings and feasts, Levites and priests, Levites and priests, clean and unclean, clean and unclean, and the day of Yom Kippur in the middle. And we talked about that structure of the book of Leviticus in the shape of a menorah and how it leads towards the blessings that Jesus brings on a Good Friday. Today, I have three things I want you to remember, but instead of me giving you things to remember, I'm going to ask you to decide how you're going to remember them. And they're on my really impressive PowerPoint. Do you like it? Uh, if you can't see it, it's just a sheet. It's not impressive. Uh, on the front, it says, uh, first of all, my first point today is come and see. Can you show me with your hands, come and see? Are you ready? One, two, three, show me, come and see. Go, come and see. Okay, come and see. I don't know, whatever you choose. Did you do it behind me? Come and see. Show me, come and see. Come and see. Brilliant, okay. The next one is going to be go. It's going to be the opposite of come, okay? So go and tell. Are you ready? Show me. Go and tell. I'm watching you. Go, go and tell. Brilliant. Go and tell. The final one is rejoice and worship. You should be good at that this morning. Give me a rejoice and worship. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Our first reading read by John this morning was uh, from John 19. Uh, and it was about two secret followers of Jesus. This hit me the other day when we had uh, three ladies who came into the garden on Good Friday and they said, we are secret followers of Jesus. We live in this place. Please don't video us today. We are secret followers of Jesus. And I said, you should have come on Sunday because on Sunday we have two secret followers of Jesus in this passage, uh, Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. They follow Jesus secretly, and yet when all the other disciples have quit, they're still there. They've got nothing to gain and everything to lose. They are powerful and clearly wealthy men. They gave 75 pounds worth of myrrh and aloes, and the blessing that they bring to Jesus comes after his death. Don't wait like Joseph waited. Don't wait like Nicodemus waited. Do it here and now. Commit today. I'm not going to wait until difficult times come. I'm going to praise Jesus today. Do you have your passage open? Uh, it, it's in the uh, book. We're looking at Matthew chapter 28 today. It begins, now after the Sabbath towards dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb. Some of those beginning words made me smile this morning when it says, after the Sabbath, what's the next word? Toward dawn. Who got up before dawn this morning? All of you, maybe not all of you. <laughs> I, can I just say, my word, it was early this morning. Who chooses to get up before dawn? I, you do, I don't. I, it was easy for me this morning because I didn't sleep too well last night thinking, what are we going to say this morning? Getting up before dawn gives us some idea of the mindset of these ladies. Because the mindset of these ladies is not like the mindset of us today. We came here on Friday and remembered the difficult day, the death day. These women are still in the mindset of Jesus is dead. My father was in church ministry for many, many years. I worked for Walk Through the Bible for many, many years. He's now 81 and he still works. He only works for a few days a month, and on the days that he works, he does funeral services. He said to me recently, it's amazing how many people don't like to say the word dead. People say, he's passed away. She's gone to the other side. 
Maybe even in Christian circles, she's gone to be with the Lord. But I don't think that that's what the two Marys turned up feeling in this morning. They turned up feeling like he's dead. And their hearts were breaking. And when they arrived, it says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. Doesn't this sound like an Old Testament passage? Or maybe even the transfiguration passage. This is saying God has turned up. God has intervened, and he wants to meet with his people. As we continue the passage, it says, And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Do you see the lovely comparison between the two? There are men and there are women. There are guards, and there are followers of Jesus. Uh, And the guards are petrified, and they act like dead men, and the angel says nothing to them. It's almost like you're afraid, so you should be. (laughs) What does he say to the women? Don't be afraid. Why don't be afraid? What does it say in the passage? Don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, you don't need to be afraid today if you seek Jesus. As we continue our passage, it says, are you ready for another hallelujah? (laughs) He is not here, for he has risen. As he said, come and see. Show me your come and see. Come and come and see. Come and see the place where he lay. What an odd thing to do, though. I I have a feeling that the Apostle Paul wishes he could come back for this point and take the place of the angel. And instead of saying to them, come and have a look, come and see, I think he would have gone through a whole bunch of verses. He would have said, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus. And the angel only said, come and see. Do you ever wonder sometimes whether we rush evangelism? And we take Bible verses and we hit them and hit them and hit them until they become followers of Jesus. It was terrific the other day. We got off the plane on Wednesday and Simon and Anne collected us. And Anne said, the the changes that have happened in the garden just behind me over here, you can see the tomb. And over that far side, you've got glass walls, you can see the tomb. People are starting to turn up to just sit And look, to just come and see. I believe that if Jesus had been asked for a description of what had happened today, he would have done what he usually did, tell a story. He either answered questions with questions, or he said, let me tell you a story. I think he would have told a story that he had told before and reminded them of its meaning. I think he would have told them my favorite parable. My favorite parable is the parable where Jesus says there was a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And he looks around to try to settle those accounts, but there was one servant who owed him 10,000 talents. Now, one talent is 20 years of a man's wage. How many did he owe? 10,000. How many years is that? This guy owes the king 200,000 years of salary. And he wakes up every morning feeling like, I owe the king. I hope he never calls my number. 
And then one day the king says, I want to settle accounts with my servants. And when he calls him in, the guy must feel sick to his stomach knowing he can never pay his debt. And the king says, you owe me everything you have. And I'm going to put you and your wife and your children in jail until they can pay. And the guy gets on his knees and says the funniest line in scripture. Give me a little more time and I'll pay it off. (laughs) You owe me 200,000 years. And he says, give me a little more time and I'll pay it off. And the king canceled his debt and let him go. Hallelujah. That's what we remember this morning. Everything you've ever done that you should not have done has been canceled because there is an empty tomb. Everything you should have done and never did has been canceled because there is an empty tomb. My word, we have five minutes left and I've done one point. It's a worry, isn't it? Verse 7, then go quickly and tell his disciples, oh, go and tell. Show me your go and tell. We've done a come and see. Show me your go and tell. Go. Go and tell his disciples that he's raised from the dead. And behold, he's going before you to Galilee where you'll see him. See, you have been told. So they departed quickly for the tomb with fear and great joy. Jesus saves But for what? So you can go to heaven when you die? It's better than that. So you can live now. So you can live here and now and be a real human. Somebody who loves and cares for others. But also so that you will spend eternity with your heavenly father. What a savior. And all you have to do is get involved. I have a a, a guy back in the UK. There's a guy we see at a music festival every year. His name is Pete. And he says, all you have to do to become a Christian is say two things. Clean me out, count me in. (laughs) That's it. Jesus wants to clean you out. He's done the hard bit. All you have to do today is say, I'm so sorry for all the things that I should have done or shouldn't have done. Clean me out. Forgive me of those things and count me in to go and tell others. Count me in to share this great news with everybody else. If you wake up every morning and you've come to see Jesus and you wake up and you remind yourself that you've been forgiven of 200,000 years worth of debt, then you will forgive everybody else when you meet them today. But in order for you to go and tell, what do you have to do first? Come and see. Show me you come and see. Come and see. And then what are you going to do? Go and tell. Who are you going to tell? Yeah. In this text, it says, go tell the disciples. Go tell those who quit on the way. Do you know anybody who quit along the way? Do you need to call them today? I remember my old pastor in the northeast of England, a guy called Neville Atkinson. I remember his final ever service. In the morning service, he preached the gospel, and then he said, go home this afternoon. I've got one more sermon tonight, and I want you to bring everybody who used to come but quit along the way. Because we do not give up. We come to do the same as Jesus. We come to seek and to save the lost. I have a question for you. Where are you seeking today? You know, if I, if I lose my car keys, actually, I get my phone out to find out where my car keys are because uh, I lose them all the time. But if I lose my car keys, I don't go to look in the fridge I go to look in the places where I expect to find them. If we're going to go and tell, we need to think about where are we going to go? Who are we going to tell? But make sure you're full first. 
come and meet with Jesus today. And behold, Jesus met them and said, greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. Is it just me or does Jesus sound particularly English? Um, greetings. I love it. Uh, greetings. Uh, um, the word that's uh, used for it in English, the word greetings in Greek means rejoice. I think that makes a lot more sense than greetings. Rejoice. And what do they do? They go straight to his feet and they worship. I'm guessing many of you today woke up this morning and you don't always feel like rejoicing. We have a guy who works down the lane who I just met with again yesterday. We see him every time we come here. And he was telling me that his son is going through chemotherapy. He's just a little boy. And each day, his dad is broken and in tears. Sometimes it's difficult to tell people, you must rejoice. There are many who will be watching this on TV and here today saying, I don't much feel like rejoicing. There's not much rejoice in me. What's the solution to that? Worship. If we come back to the feet of Jesus and we pour out our tears on his feet and we give him all our heartaches and our troubles, then our worship will help us to rejoice. That doesn't mean that our problems will disappear. They'll just take on a a different context. We came to remember three things this morning. Can you show me those three things? Are you ready? Come and see. Come and see. Go and tell. Rejoice and worship. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that your son came to this world to pay our 200,000 years worth of debt. Lord, we thank you that you didn't generously offer to give us more time to pay off our debt. You set us free and let us go. Lord, help us to come and see who you are today, to fill ourselves up so much on your love and your peace and your grace that when we leave this place today, we will go and we will tell. People will, will see as we rejoice and worship. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's stand together and declare the glory of our risen King. Let's go and tell.
So we have all come and seen today that the tomb is empty and that he's risen. And now it is time for us to go and tell. Tell the whole world. And as you do that, do it with rejoicing and drawing near to Jesus in worship. And he will fill you. And I'm going to pray for you now as you go. We're going to sing a great song at the end. Please don't go without singing that. But let's just a moment. Just know who that person is. We're going to go and seek that Jesus is already going ahead of you. May the love of the Lord Jesus, the love of the crucified Lord Jesus, draw you closer to himself each day. May the power of the Lord Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus, strengthen you as you seek to serve and follow him every day. And may the joy and worship of the Lord Jesus fill you to overflowing that the world may believe he is Lord to his eternal glory. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be blessed this day and take that blessing to the world. Then it will be a happy day. Amen. Jesus is alive.